All right, uh, my name is Doug, and I just wanted to give you uh, a quick overview uh, in this screencast on approaches uh, to source discovery and description for the USIOs. Uh, and this is really kind of following the line of the robot to sitemap to waddle and what we do with it uh, approach that I've talked with many of you about uh, through emails and Google Wave and some other environments. So uh, I just wanted to go through real briefly uh, a few slides here and show you some things online. Um, First off, it's fair uh, to ask, uh, why is it we want to um, uh, do this? <clears throat> there are several things that I see as beneficial to utilizing uh, a common approach across the IOs for service discovery. One is for testing and monitoring uh, of these things. That is, knowing that services are actually there, monitoring their, uh, their operation, and testing that we haven't had any regression in terms of uh, new services, uh, uh, data resource URIs changing, other things like this. The other one is discovery, uh, trying to uh, apply a pattern that allows us to discover services, discover new services uh, that might be available. So uh, we're trying to address that as well. Um, and also then having a cross IO standard mechanism to expose these. Uh, in terms of assessment, um, we can look at things that like how and where they're being used. Uh, this can help facilitate that by having a, a common approach to to uh, the URIs and parsing those out of logs and things like that. Uh, where are the gaps and overlaps in services that we have uh, across the IOs? Uh, are we uh, missing coverage of certain types of data? Do we have double coverage of data? Are there areas where we have data that could be cross-linked? Uh, so it kind of plays into the linked data pattern approach in that this is a mechanism and approach to discovery of where those, those, uh, those areas that might need to be linked together uh, exist. Uh, so that's kind of really what we're looking at uh, in that regard. Uh, what I'm proposing is uh, the use of uh, the robots.txt file, which is a standard by implementation. Uh, there is no W3C standard for robots.txt that I'm aware of. Uh, nor is there one for sitemap.xml. Sitemap These are essentially best practices of the community that have uh, uh, come out um, by nature of them being best practices, I suppose. Uh, but they are not in and of themselves standards. Now, Waddle has been submitted to the W3C um, for uh, uh, standardization. So uh, there's, uh, and I'll, I'll provide a link for that in here, but um, the W3C is, is looking at using the Waddle um, approach as a standard mechanism then uh, for describing these types of services. So <clears throat> let's take a quick look at what these files are look like, right? We've probably seen uh, what a standard robots file looks like. Uh, and in this case then, what we've done is we've added a component to this, right, called sitemap, which is linking to uh, the, uh, the URL for our sitemap. In this case, I'm doing this on the dev Chrono servers for, for just uh, uh, purposes of demonstration. So of course then we would expect to, to take a look at what uh, sitemap is like, uh, so let's clear this off and take a look at our, our sitemap. It's a fairly simple um, uh, XML document and uh, we have a namespace in it. Because sitemaps are not currently Waddle aware, it will be necessary then to establish a namespace within which we define the Waddle URI. So I have, for purposes of demonstration again, uh, created a namespace here, COL, uh, Consortium Ocean Leadership, and then made a node within that namespace called Waddle. And within that Waddle node, then a, a child uh, Waddle URI. And in this case, then, I've pointed to um, the BRGLDO Columbia Org Services uh, Waddle file. Okay? And uh, we'll show a little bit about what this file looks like here in just a little bit. This is a, a document, then, that... Um, describes um, REST type services for this thing. So the pattern, the robot file points to the sitemap file, the sitemap file points to the waddle file. So <clears throat> what do I want to show a little bit here then? Um, once we have the robots in the sitemaps file, what we can do with that, and let's give you a quick idea of what the what the waddle file looks like. Okay, so this is the Waddle file for the Lamont services. Okay. Uh, these are the services that are described uh, at the location here. 
All right. So the services that are located here are described within our Waddle document. Note that I'm not describing at present any of the geospatial services. Right. It's feasible that you could do the geospatial features, uh, geospatial services within the Waddle document. Um, one would argue that the geospatial community already is established and, and has a very good pattern for the registration and discovery of their services, and it's probably not necessary uh, to bring that into this realm. Uh, we're really talking about services that are more REST-based, more XML RPC-ish, uh, even linked data uh, in a way, although it doesn't quite map to the linked data. There are other approaches for that. Uh, so we're really not trying to address the geospatial stuff that's already been covered uh, by the OGC community quite well. So, so this is what it looks like in XML. And what we can and and that we can parse this uh, and look at it. The other thing, of course, is that because it's XML, we can actually transform it. Here is the same document transformed now into XHTML. You'll notice that we can actually put in the representations of this, right? So we can make links to the XSD documents that actually define what our XML representation of our response is going to be. So we have a mechanism now for someone to take a response to a, to a query, and then if they're having issues with that, to actually validate it against the schema to ensure that, that what they're getting is valid and that the issue truly is on their end. It's another benefit to this, right? It's this, this idea that we can try and push some of these aspects off on people that are using the services, and when they are coming to us, then they're coming uh, to the providers of those services for uh, far more uh, uh, higher level uh, type questions or concerns that they may have. So, so that's its representation then uh, in uh, XHTML. And one could, of course, put the style sheet link within the XML document such that many browsers would see an XML document, see an associated style file for it, and do the transform on the fly. Um, that's really uh, an implementation issue that the, the, the given um, administrators of the site could determine uh, how they want to approach that. So we have a discovery, robots, sitemaps, Waddle. We, we have what the Waddle file looks like in terms of XML, and all these files can, can be made available. What it looks like in XHTML. Now, I want to cover one more thing. OK, how might we use this then? Or how might uh, 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 a client use this? This is a, a simple program. The program goes through three stages. The first stage is that uh, we pass into it uh, simply the domain that is hosting the services that we're quite interested in, right? In this case, I put in devcronos.org. What it will do then is it will actually then go through and locate the sitemap based on that, right? Once you have the sitemap, we have another method then that says, well, I'm going to parse through that sitemap and find then the actual URI uh, to our Waddle document. Once we have that Waddle document, there's another aspect. That document can contain... Um, example data for queries against a resource endpoint. Right? So I can stand up a service endpoint and I can say this is an example service endpoint and these are example parameters that you can pass to it. And these, these are encoded into this document such that a person could then construct the query and submit it to the endpoint to see if in fact it's working. So if I actually take this, doc, or this uh, code and compile it up and run it, You'll see that it actually goes out, retrieves this uh, robots file, retrieves the sitemap file, and then begins to make queries against uh, the Lamont services. So, so now what it's doing is going through, uh, constructing up these queries, putting in the example parameters, and then uh, conducting the queries to, and getting back uh, responses that we hope are in fact, and they are uh, request successful. And it's going through each and every one, constructing um, different types of uh, parameters, different types of edge cases then uh, for these services. So we've gone from discovery to testing it and retrieving data all in a very uh, short um, programmatic approach. Right? So I mean, you're, you're talking about um, uh, a piece of code that is uh, uh, relatively short in terms of what it takes to do this whole pipeline. 